Hi guys, in this video we are building a piano app which is going to use Java's built-in uh, MIDI synthesizer. So let's go package, uh, new Java class, the app. This was actually an idea. Um, someone mentioned a long time ago on this channel. So I finally got to do this. Nope. Go. That goes up. Uh, what's the root node? Horizontal layout. Let's go with that. Because keys are placed horizontally. It makes sense. Root, preferred size, 500. No, let's go with 300. There, there, there aren't many things in the scene graph apart from the keys. Uh, we need something to play the thing. We need channel. And we're channel. We're going to load the channel here. Uh, okay, I think it's synthesizer. The API is interesting. It's not very straightforward. Uh, cannot get synthesizer. We need to open this and we need to load an instrument. I think there are many. So if the first one doesn't work, which I'm going to use, um, try something different. Actually, if the first one doesn't work, then you don't have any instruments because a thing that returns an empty array if there's nothing in there. Okay, fair enough. But if it does work, you can play around with other instruments, I think. Get channels. We just need the one. Right, so we've got our channel. Um, let's just test it. Uh, note on. Uh, middle C is 60, okay. Velocity control. So velocity is the volume, basically. 60, 60. Let's see how this runs. Should, it's a, it should play a note when it loads. Which is not very loud. I can barely hear it. I'm hoping it's the same experience for you and it's not like super loud in the video. Um, let's go 100. stick to 90. So we can play something. Okay, um, I need notes then. I need to represent my notes because I want to have an octave ideally. Class note, uh, what do we need? Well, we need a note, uh, we need a name, we need a key code, which is the thing that I press on a physical keyboard that plays the note and um, note number okay so we've got these things mm, let's populate our notes Notes, uh, new note. The name is, well, we start with C, then we go to, well, we play the, I'm going to use the middle row of the keyboard, so we'll start with key code A. The note number, what was it, 60? Let's go with that. So I now need to populate the other ones as well. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So I've got an octave. Um, C, E, F, G, H, A, B. Uh, I'll just map these to uh, the middle row of the keyboard. J, K, 60. Now, is it going to capture all the white keys? 
<clears throat> node number from 0 to 127. I'm pretty sure the black keys are in there as well, which means we'll have to skip some. Right, I need to remember how the thing looks. So there is C sharp, which means 61 is C sharp, and that one is 62. There is D sharp, so 64. I don't think there is a black node between E and F. So that's 65. Then F sharp is, and then there's G sharp, which is black. And then there is, um, wait, what? one, two, three, four. There is no H. I don't think there is an H. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So that's 67. G sharp, A, there is A sharp, which is black. So that must be 71. And there's nothing between B and C, so this is 72. I think that's right. Um, I'm just too lazy to get an image on a keyboard. Let's go with that. So notes, um, well, I need to visualize these. So I need a note view. That was an interesting option. Uh, class note view stands stack pane. background is going to be rectangle <coughs> 50 uh, 200 how about that and the fill is going to be white and the stroke is going to be black the children add all the background and then the text which is note uh, name and if I populate these, I no longer need that. So I read this here and notes for each note. I'm going to create a node view, note view, not node, um, and attach to the scene graph. Let's try that. It's all right. Um, this needs to be shorter, I think, um, and we need some space in between. So spacing 15, set the entire thing to be 150. We don't need that, and we can make it shorter. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Maybe increase the stroke a little bit. Stroke width to 2.5. So it stands out a bit more. Yeah. Now, the interesting part is how to make these things move. Well, first of all, we need to capture keys somehow. So let's do the easy bit first. Scene. Set on key pressed, uh, on key press, get code. Yeah. So when this thing happens, uh, what do we do with it? Well, we have our notes, we have our views. We'll need access to the views, so I'm going to need to make this accessible. Root uh, get children. We need to map these um, string. We need to map these to note views. So it's view, I guess, uh, note view. We then need to filter based on which one was pressed. 
and each node has its own associated Q code. So it's view note key is the same as the one that was pressed on the physical keyboard. Find, well, we can just do for each. There is going to be a single match anyway, so I didn't want to worry about. So we've got the view that needs to be done something to. Um, I'm going to animate it, I think. That's the easiest option here. I also need to play the note, which is the easy bit, I guess. Where's my channel? Note on view, note, note number. And what was the velocity? I forgot. Is it 90? So that plays the thing. Let's just try that uh, without the animation. <coughs> Okay, that's not too bad. Um, just wanted to see if I got these correctly. So there is definitely a black note in between C and D, and then D and E. Then it goes to F, and then that plus two, plus two, plus two. And then there's nothing between B and C. Yeah, so I think that should sound all right. <laughs> I'm lacking, I'm lacking other keys. I want more keys. Yeah, I just want to get an inversion so that I can get G. Oh, actually, perfect fix as well. Uh, our our window is nice. Oh yeah, I've got multiple key codes bound to the same thing. Um, okay, L and what's that? A colon, semicolon. That's interesting. I've got both on the same key, so how does that work? The semicolon work? Oh yeah, the colon is probably triggered by shift F, uh, shift um, semicolon. It doesn't sound bad. So I'm assuming I've hit the correct notes uh, with respect to the note numbers. Right, uh, we need to animate the whole thing so I can see which note I'm pressing. View, um, so how do we animate this? Let's make, let's make this visible. I'm going to change the fill of that. Uh, because so, there's a fill transition to take uh, duration, duration, duration shape from two. So it's duration. Let's make it super quick. Um, shape, which is background, <clears throat> from is the white color to black color. And then we want to change it back as well. So we need to set the count to two. Reverse turned on. Uh, and then we'll just play it. Cool. 
artifacts. Um, see if you can recognize this from a game. Yeah, there we go. Plays a lot. Uh, the game, not not the MIDI keyboard. Uh, anyway, I think we're pretty much done here. Um, yeah, so we've got in this video um, access to a synthesizer uh, with very interesting API uh, that we then use to play a note. In fact, we played notes from a single octave, actually just going over to second octave. Um, I'm pretty sure I got these numbers correctly. Um, if not, you can fix them. But based on how it sounded, I think it sounded all right. Then we um, mapped the key presses, the physical key presses on a keyboard to the views, and then we made the node related to the view play its note. As a final thing, I'm just going to change this to one and see what happens. I wonder if there are any more instruments available. That's pretty much the same thing. I know. Maybe it's slightly different um, sound. Let's go with five. I don't know, I can't really see the difference. Um, maybe if you can try to iterate over, over all of the instruments available, maybe you'll find one that doesn't sound like piano. Right, uh, on this note, thanks for watching.